Yo, what is up guys? It is Bumfreeze, back with episode 89 of our Reddit series. This one's going to be a little bit more entitled parents, and I know you're going to love this one. We've got a couple of longer stories again this episode, and I know you guys love those, so don't forget to leave a like on the video to show you like them. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe, then sit back, relax, and get annoyed at some entitled parents. Yesterday I was at a Wales Comic Con, but due to bad weather, I had to stay in the cafe at a train station that was 10 minutes away while my boyfriend went to get some stuff done back at Comic Con. I had been in the cafe for about half an hour when this family group comes in with 6 or 7 kids aged somewhere between 6 and 12. They were playful at first which is fine, but this is a very small cafe and they'd begun to get too rowdy, knocking tables, drinks, climbing on furniture, etc. Everyone was visibly annoyed while the parental guardians didn't seem to care. 45 minutes into this, I have had enough and said to the kids calmly but firmly, excuse me, this is a cafe, not a playground. If you could please calm down. And I get cut off by a woman who says, who the F do you think you are talking to them like that? And this woman, I couldn't tell if it was the mother or the grandmother was screaming about how it's her responsibility, not mine, to tell the kids what to do. I just say, ma'am, I don't mean to start an argument, but you're not doing very good being responsible for them. Everyone is uncomfortable and... She cuts me off again and says, shut up, they're not yours to tell what to do. At this point, she's standing up and getting in my face. I'm still in my seat and she's asking me if I want to fight. I tell her to calm down and that I'm not trying to fight her and she asks me if I want a coffee thrown in my face and I just tell her to look after her kids. She's now ranting and raving about how no one has the right to speak to their child like this and why it matters how they're acting because they're not my kids. It matters because everyone is uncomfortable. Meanwhile, the coffee shop owner tries to calm her down and she apologizes to the owner before proceeding to throw her hot coffee in my face along with all over my work. It wasn't hot enough to cause burns, but it definitely was hot enough to hurt. I just sigh saying, very charming miss, thank you for that. And I stay in my seat cleaning up my stuff to avoid any more arguments. She then proceeds to ask me, what are you gonna do about it? Are you going to fight me now? Or did I get all your papers wet? You know where the police are. If they can get me, I'm leaving. Don't tell my kids what to do and I'm not scared of the police. She then proceeds to get all of her family to leave. She then walks out to the train platform with her family as my boyfriend comes into the cafe and he sees me drenched in hot coffee with everyone else in the cafe comforting me and helping clean me up. I tell him that I just had hot coffee thrown on me and that she just left. He runs out while screaming, who just did that? And she smugly walks to him and says, it was me. What are you gonna do about it, little man? Hit me, fight back, before raising her own fists. And she's just continuing to look for a fight. He screamed at her before coming back to take care of me. The shouting had caught security's attention and witnesses informed on the incident. They then detained her until the police arrived. I've told the police what happened, they took down my info and will also be reviewing the security footage. They will be calling me later today for an official statement and they already have this woman identified. I just got off the phone with the police and I need some discussion with my family to decide clearly what plan of action I want to take and they will be calling me at 5pm tomorrow for my official decision. I also found out that it's the grandmother, not the mother. After having a talk with my family, we decided that we want to prosecute her for common assault. Since I didn't have lasting injuries, compensation may not be an option, but prosecution for common assault will be the best option of now. This way, at least she won't feel that she's won or can just get away with doing this to anyone. I'm waiting for tomorrow's call. The assault reported to the North Wales Police will be transferred to the BTP to investigate as it occurred on their patch. Once I have a reference number from BTP, I will forward this to you. An officer will contact you from BTP in due course to see what you want to do in regards to a complaint. Thanks. So once the BTP contact me, I can say I want to prosecute. I was expecting a call from them at 5pm, but I guess plans changed. What is it with entitled parents and thinking they can get away with assault? I mean, in this case, she was straight up happy to assault this person and then taunt her even more after she's assaulted her. Like, what is wrong with these people? I'll just never understand. So the cast we've got for this one is Bean, who is OP's fiance, M, who is his mum, entitled mum as entitled mum, and entitled kid is EK, obviously. So, when Bean was in first grade, Entitled Mum would send Entitled Kid to Bean's house often without confirming that it would be okay with his mum first. He would be there until 9 to 10 pm every time he was over, which was well past bedtime for a first grader. His mum would have to call the Entitled Mum just to come and get her kid, and they lived down the street and she was actually home all day, so they were just using her as a free babysitter so she wouldn't have to deal with him. Bean and Entitled Kid would play and carry on like kids normally would. 
but Entitled Kid was incredibly aggressive. Then when it came to school, he would make fun of Bean and act like he was the black sheep and single him out and tell him that he wasn't allowed to hang out with him, yet he would still proceed to play with him after school. Entitled Mum was no better on school grounds as she and her posse would make fun of many kids when dropping off or picking up their own kids from school calling some of them retarded, idiots, and Bean remembers that one of them said someone looked like a Mongol. The school didn't do anything to stop this and none of the parents wanted anything to do with it or were too scared to. One day, when dropping off Bean at school, Entitled Mum and her posse decided today was the day to pick on him. According to his mum, they were calling him fat and stupid and said that his mum was a bad parent for it. His mum overheard this and she had had enough. His mum waited until almost all of the kids were inside, but not before Bean was, as she confronted Entitled Mum and said, Listen here, I'm gonna punch you, and I'm gonna punch you hard. Now, this is Bean's new fee mother, one of the nicest people I've ever met, who has gone full mama bear rage mode, and she had just said that she would punch Entitled Mum in the face. They both proceeded to then fight on the ground in a bare knuckle brawl complete with scratching, biting, hair pulling, you know. All of the moves you would see on ESPN or your local playground. The principal eventually came out, broke it up, and the police were called. His mum and the entitled mum were escorted off school property and told to go home. Later that night, the cops show up at Bean's house. They ask questions about what happened, and of course, his mum told them all about how they were harassing all of these kids on school property, and since the school wasn't doing anything about it, she decided to defend her child. The cops left without arresting her, but in the next couple of days, she had a summon to court because Entitled Mum decided to press charges. His mum never bothered going as she knew that she was in the right and surprisingly, never had to pay any charges. Parents who saw or heard about what happened congratulated her and said they were glad that someone finally stood up to the Entitled Mum. However, his mum and the Entitled Mum did not go unscathed from the incident. Both the mum and the entitled mum were banned from being on the school property for the rest of the school year, which is kind of sad because Bean had a play that she had to stand in the back of the field to watch. I was also confused by the fact that nothing happened when my fiance's mum got a summons, but we're assuming that entitled mum dropped the charges after finding out legal fees or something like that. Or maybe she just had a change of heart if possible. My fiance also recalls his mother's mugshot getting taken, but we don't know when and if that was before or after they showed up to their house, so the police does have the case file and she probably has a record for it, but I'm not sure. For those of you wondering what happened in the new school year when the ban was dropped, they are still living in the same house as before, just down the street, and Bean moved to a new school because they didn't want to deal with Entitled Mum now that she was back. You know, following up a story where an Entitled Mum assaults somebody to doing a complete 180 flip and the Entitled Mum being the one who gets assaulted really isn't something I was expecting on doing today. I mean look, assault's assault and quite frankly there's no excuse for it, but in the same breath, I'm glad to a degree that the Entitled Mum had some kind of punishment, I just wish it was something that was a little bit less violent. Nonetheless though, at least this person managed to get the Entitled Mum out of her life. Well, I'm guessing you guys need some background. My sister, we'll call her E, she got killed by a drunk driver about a month ago. And this really hurt, not only because she's my sister, but we were best friends. She always had my back and I had hers. She was 20, so she was just getting into the fun part of life, about to graduate college, and everything was great. So the funeral was hard at the start. I was a bearer, which for those who don't know, is somebody who helps carry the casket. When the priest opened it up at first and let us look, that was when I started crying and I never stopped. Almost halfway through, I hear the door slam open in the back and there was this woman and three kids that walk in. The woman is talking, in reality close to screaming, into her phone. Of course, after two minutes, the kids are running around and being loud. This is getting on everyone's nerve, so my mum asks the priest to get them out. The priest is a timid guy, so of course, he couldn't get himself to do it. So he pages somebody from the looks of it. While we wait for the family to get out, we have to stop. I was really pissed at this damn mum and I was about to murder her when my mum gets up and storms over to her. She grabs her phone and slams it on the ground. This entire woman starts freaking out like her kid had just died. She's screaming at my mum who is just standing there in rage. When the woman is done, she starts screaming about how you clearly are important enough to ruin my daughter's funeral, then you can get the F out and get yourself a new damn phone. I was a mixture of shock and impressed. Shock because I've never seen my mum that mad, not even in the hospital, and impressed because she did nothing more physical than point a finger. I personally would have snapped her neck. This woman of course defended herself, saying that how could she know it's a funeral? Look around, why is there a casket, tears, and a priest? 
the nerve on some people to do crap like this. She starts mocking my mum, getting her things, and on the way out, called us horrible people for ruining her afternoon. This enraged me, so I ran after her, and afterwards, I screamed out to the entitled bastard the following. You effing slut. I don't know why I said slut, I was just really mad. Your afternoon is ruined? Oh no. What will we do? What would you do without the poor bastard having a nice afternoon? She cuts me off and says, actually, you people ruined my afternoon. This killed me, and I got the most mad I've ever been, and said to her, You came here with your damn kids and ruined my effing sisters. Keep in effing mind it's not my aunt. It's my effing sister, and you effing ruined her funeral, so your day is ruined. I mock cry and say, Well, go have your damn pity party somewhere else, jackass. At this point, I'm out of breath and I'm death staring her, and she says, well, maybe if you weren't here in my space, and I couldn't take her anymore, so I punch her in the gut. It wasn't too hard, not enough to really hurt, but enough for her to feel it. She of course screams Bloody Mary, and I turn around and walk inside as she screams the usual, I've been assaulted, call 911 rubbish. After that, I never saw her again. She probably didn't call the cops because she knew she was in the wrong. In the end, we finally got my sister buried and we lived on. I definitely miss her and I'm so proud of myself for standing up in her name. Every once in a while, I stop in her room and I have a one-way conversation with her. And it's comforting. This all was ridiculous, I know. But I just can't believe someone would have the guts to do that. It really slaughters my faith in humanity. Anyway, thanks for reading this and I hope you realize what absolute crap bags these people are. So that makes that what, three from three for assault on entitled parents and vice versa? Um, definitely wasn't expecting this at the start of the day, but you know, these kind of things happen when you're dealing with entitled parents. But on a more serious note, this is probably one of the worst entitled parents stories I've read. I know not a lot happened in it, but for somebody to come into a funeral and start acting entitled as if they what, own the funeral, that's pretty damn bad. I mean, what do I really expect though? Entitled parents know absolutely no bounds. Alright everyone, that is that for today's episode of Entitled Parents. I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just going to take a second to plug a couple of my social medias including our Discord server. I do have a Twitter and an Instagram if you want to follow me on both of those. They are both at Bumfreeze and feel free to send me a message and I'll do my best to respond. I also just want to take a second to say thank you so much for all the love lately. All of the comments, the likes, the subscribers, just the fact that you guys tune in and watch my videos every day, it really does make my day. Every single one of you is the backbone of this channel and I really cannot express how much I appreciate that. Without you guys this channel would be nothing and I love making these videos for you guys and I love the fact that you enjoy them. So on that note, I will wrap things up for today's episode of Entitled Parents. I just want to take a second again to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next episode of Entitled Parents. Bye.